This is my B5S4, and in this build series, I've done a lot of work to get the car to where it is now. Today we've got a whole list of things to do, starting with making the car a bit more livable. I've already improved this interior a lot from when I got it. I replaced broken door cards, as well as wrapped some of the interior trim in carbon fiber. Today we're going to be replacing the A-pillar trim, which, as you can see, is completely falling off. As of now, when you drive the car, this is where your eyes are drawn to on the interior, and I really don't want that to be the case. It's a major eyesore, so it's been something Thing I've wanted to replace for a while. This was pretty easy to remove as it was held in with one Torx bit and a bunch of plastic clips. From the factory, that cloth part that came off very easily is supposed to be attached to this plastic part I'm removing now. You can see the previous owner's 3M tape trying to hold it in place. My approach is slightly different. I found a complete replacement piece from a donor car on eBay and I am so glad that it matches perfectly. Along with actually being attached to the A-pillar, the fabric on this new piece isn't stained, which will definitely help the interior as well. And it was really cheap to boot. This may not seem like that big of an improvement, but trust me, going from an interior that literally falls apart as you drive it to something that you can trust and is actually quite comfortable and nice is a game changer, especially on an older platform like the B5. After popping the piece back in place, I put the screw in and it looks leagues better. You can let me know what you think, but I think this dramatically upgrades the interior quality of this car. The interior is really coming together, but there's still a lot of things that I want to do to it, including speakers, a head unit, and potentially replacing the front seats. That's all for another episode, though. If you remember from the last S4 episode, we broke a check valve and put in a temporary replacement. Well, the OEM one has finally arrived, meaning we can throw this in and go log the car. The intent of a check valve is to ensure that air only flows in one direction. Consequently, the only thing that you need to worry about when reinstalling one is to make sure that it's facing the right way. If you don't, you're going to run into some serious problems. While I was in here, I decided to tighten all of the hose clamps from our spider hose we installed last time. We ended up pressure testing the system later in the week and later in this video, but for now, this is what I did before doing the next log. Continuing with my theme of improving the livability of this car, we're going to make the front end look a lot nicer by replacing this grille with a more modernized one. Other than being really dirty, the plastic is actually incredibly faded and is nowhere close to the original black that I want it to be. I want the grill to really pop, so I did a little bit of shopping. The grill is held on with a number of clips, and it's honestly a lot easier to remove than I first thought it would be. Here is a look at the old grill outside of the car, where you can see just how faded the plastic is. What makes that even more apparent is setting it next to the new one. This is a honeycomb grill for the B5 platform. It's a much more modern grill style, and I think it's really going to shine here. Some people want to swap to the newer style S4 logo when they do this update to the grill, but I wanted to maintain the original. I couldn't stand the idea of parting with this classic logo, so I decided to mount it directly to the new grill. Here is the final product, and I love it a lot more than I thought I would. I also ended up being extremely happy with the fitment as it has the same clips as the OEM grill. So reinstallation is as simple as pushing it into place. The grill is finally in and here's what it looks like on the car. It's the middle of pollen season where I live so my cars get dirty almost immediately. But other than that, it looks tremendous. We're gonna go do a final log on the S4 for 91 octane, and then we should be good to send it over to Motoza and then hopefully start tuning on some higher octanes and then E85. She idles like a charm. 
I'm so freaking scared to try the no lift shift. I sent the login and a few days later we received some updated software for 91. I hooked the car up to a battery tender and uploaded the new file. While this was uploading, I figured I would multitask and improve the front end even more. This front bumper design has a lot of holes in it because it's specifically designed to hold a European plate. It looks really goofy with an American plate in there, so I decided to look for a product that they don't actually make anymore. This is a plate filler, and it's designed to go with the bumper. The previous owner of this piece decided to drill holes in it, and they're not even even, so it's really not in the greatest condition, but at least it matches the paint code. I like it, but I don't like the four holes, so I'm trying to figure out a way we can make it look even better. I think a temporary fix for now is going to be to vinyl wrap wrap it in black. You can still slightly see the impression of those four holes, but only if you look really closely. You'll see what I mean. It's also a really good opportunity for me to practice with a smaller and more technical piece with this new vinyl material. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it, and it's always fun when you get to learn and practice a new skill. I am on the fence of how I like the look of this black plate filler or if I want to try to find something else. You can let me know what you think in the comments, but I think it is notably better than having nothing there at all. I'll show you later in the video, but this bumper is pretty much on its way out the door because of the condition it's in. So when I eventually put a nice paint coat on this car or wrap it, depending on what I do, I'm going to replace the whole bumper. But this really does make it look a lot better in my opinion. Time for some preventative maintenance. This is a 034 Motorsports throttle body boot for the 2.7T engine. As far as boost leaks go, the stock throttle body boot is something that you absolutely want to replace, and this one's rated for a lot more boost than I'm actually running. The turbo system on the B5S4 is really interesting, and it'll explain why this part likes to tear. It's a V6 engine, and each side has three cylinders, which power a single turbo. Those turbos then go through their own individual intercoolers and up into this rubber throttle body boot. That is a gross oversimplification of the system, but all you really need to know is it holds a lot of pressure. And the stock ones are known to go out. Mine is in pretty decent condition, but I would rather be safe than sorry when it comes to something like this since I really don't want anything getting sucked in if it were to tear. You can see the difference in quality between the braided silicone and the rubber from the OEM piece. The fitment on this piece is excellent and I would highly recommend it if you're looking to replace yours. Similar to pretty much any other boost line, the install is really as simple as unbolting the hose clamps that held the original in and bolting them onto the new one in the same location. You'll find that working on air-based systems is actually quite nice because you don't really have to worry about much other than tightening the hose clamps and making sure things are seated properly, of course. Now, I have run into a bunch of boost and vacuum leaks in my day, and I think it's time I finally level up my ability to find them. I went online and ordered a special rubber fitting to actually pressure test the boost system of this car. I figured that would be easier than waiting and looking to see if I can find them just by visuals alone. And boy, was I right. These are pretty cheap and easy to DIY if you want to build your own, but I figured I would just order one since it was on sale and they're a pretty good deal. On this car, you want to bolt it straight up to the Y pipe on the top. The important thing that you need to remember is the PCV system. It comes with a specific cap for the pancake valve. If you don't cap this, you're going to risk breaking your pancake valve since it's not supposed to take that kind of pressure. I'm pretty sure stuff like this happens to everybody the first time they pressure test, so don't get discouraged. Here's what happens if you do not tighten the pressure testing boot enough. Apart from being a little startling, it's really not that bad. My goal was to gradually increase the pressure that I put into the system until I found leaks. The first one I found and fixed was at the Lobster Claw. The next one I found is actually a little bit different in both location and severity. I noticed that one of my injectors was actually leaking air through the O-ring. It's a new O-ring, and it's a new injector, so it shouldn't be doing that. I noticed that as I put pressure on the fuel rail, it would go away. It was then that I noticed that one of the fuel pressure 
pressure bolts was actually sheared off, and it reminded me that I noticed this when I replaced the injectors. It's a really small bolt, and I need to order specific tools to try to get it out. I'll go through drilling it out and replacing it when I get the tools in, but for now, I came up with a temporary fix with a hose clamp. I promise it's not as sketchy as it sounds. And like I said, it's temporary until I can get an actual way to remove that bolt. I set the hose clamp up so it clamps the fuel rail to the intake manifold in the same way that a bolt there would. When I pressure tested this fix to see if it would work, it eliminated that boost leak. So even though it seemed a little janky, it worked just fine. And I'm not worried about metal melting. And it looks like I actually have a bolt that chipped off, so we're gonna have to either figure out a way to get that out or play it by ear. We'll see what happens. It's a pretty small bolt. The hose clamp right now actually worked weirdly well, so we'll see if that's any better. We've done a lot of work to the front end of this car, but we're not gonna stop there in today's episode. I absolutely love the look of front lips on cars, and I wanna do a little bit of myth busting today because I found one for the B5S4 that is cheaper than anything I could find. It is a Cupra R front lip, and it was $27 shipped, which absolutely blew me away. Way. You might be wondering why I would put such a cheap spoiler on a car I care about like this. Well, the main reason is this bumper is on its way out. I mentioned this earlier in the episode, but this front bumper is severely cracked and it doesn't fit very well. When I eventually make the car look pretty with nicer paint, I'm going to replace it, so you could think of this as temporary, and I really just wanted to see what it could look like for that cheap. For that price, the fitment wasn't great, but with a little bit of modification, it was actually a lot better than I thought it would be. You can see here how bad the bumper is. Whenever I work on a universal front lip and fitting it to a car, I like to work from the edges in because I can guarantee that I put the edges in the same spot. I can then custom cut the middle portion so that it works with the distance that is remaining. This accounts for the problem that most universal front lips are a lot wider than the car you're trying to put them onto. My measurement for this portion actually worked out ironically well, and this little raised portion ended up being exactly in the middle of the car when I installed it. So for how cheap this was, this is really cool. I'll definitely replace it in the future when I have a nicer bumper to put on the car, but for the price, I don't know if you can really beat this. It adds a much lower stance to the car, and in combination with the other front end mods we did in today's episode, it makes the whole car look a lot more aggressive and put together. Now the front end is looking a lot nicer, and the interior is looking a lot prettier. I want to correct something in the engine bay that a helpful commenter pointed out in the last episode. These diverter valves are not in their OEM position. They're actually rotated 90 degrees. I unbolted them and replaced them back into their factory position, as you can see here, and took the time to rebuild with reinforced silicone the little actuation system above them. That way, the hoses won't collapse when the diverter valves are being actuated. I absolutely love when I get helpful suggestions from my subscribers, so seriously thank you. I've also seen my community help troubleshoot each other's problems in my comment section, and that really warms my heart and makes me super happy. You guys are the best, and I truly mean that. Back to rebuilding this. I cut silicone hose to make sure that it was the right length, and I pretty much mimicked the original pattern. I think the diverter valves sit a lot better in this natural OEM position, and go figure, that makes a lot of sense. I also went ahead and put hose clamps and zip ties on every vacuum line in the engine bay. I use zip ties because these hoses are way too small for any of the hose clamps I have on hand. I'll replace them with hose clamps when I get ones that are that small. I did a little bit of vacuum testing, but I think we still have a few really minor leaks. I was able to get my idle vacuum pressure from 10 down to 17. I also fixed a leak in my brake booster line by replacing the clamps to the line itself, which had become a little bit loose. I took the time to do another log because the car is running so much smoother. Okay, third gear rips, oh my god tunnel coming up, baby. And when there's a tunnel, you have to test out two-step. I've never had a car with two steps. It feels like the car is going to explode and that's because it kind of is.
I am so ecstatic with the progress that we've made on this build so far, and I have so many more plans for it going forward. If you have mods you would like to see me put on this car, let me know, because I'm definitely still in the progress of planning the future steps for this car. I have a ton in mind already, and I am so excited to see what this car looks like in a year's time from now. It's going to be a completely different animal. I want to take a second to seriously thank each and every one of you. It's very likely that when this video comes out, I will have a thousand subscribers, and that is a goal that I honestly never thought I would be able to meet. It's something I've wanted since I was a child, and I seriously cannot thank you enough. If you enjoyed this video, learned something, or want to see more just like it, consider liking and subscribing. It really helps my channel out. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.